lovely mounds okay. here. Yeah. So, and then I'll go digging when we've got the establishing of the first set of shops. Who's gone in? Oh yeah, no, the place is polluted with insects. Oh, you got it out, it fell yeah, down in the grass. Yeah, I see it. Gorgeous. You will be stepped on. So I think I'm going to pick you up. I think, I think... That might be wise. I'm just going to take a look around this side. Bear, you're ruining their shot. Come on, don't dig. Bear, come on. So, Deirdre, what are you doing here? So what I'm doing here is I'm digging into... Ah, oh, look! I'm digging into your manure pile. Yes. And I'm just seeing some of the life forms that are there. So On the outside. I'm making a film, which is going to be exhibited next year in the Douglas Hyde Gallery in Trinity. And the film is called The Quickening. Say again? The Quickening. Okay. And it's thinking about the future of food and food production in Ireland. So what this set of, particular set of shots with Tom Flanagan, my amazing cinematographer, um, but this set of shots is really looking at the role of manure and the role of animals in maintaining soil health and, you know, the biodiversity of soil, which is so crucial to the future of food. So, um, yeah, here we're going to do some slow tracking shots around your fairly recent pile of manure, which I recorded here with John Brennan, my sound recordist, a few months ago. We record so I, we recorded the soil life in mm -hmm. these manure piles, and in particular the life of the worms. So I'm about to take the um, shovel here to this manure pipe pi pile, and take a, see what the worm activity is like inside it, so that we can shoot it. So it'll be married up to the sound engineers noise or sorry sounds, sounds of, the of, worms. of the worms which are incredible they're they're the closest thing i can find to them is the sound of deep space interesting yeah, yeah. you Very know the kind interesting. of electronic noises and pulses you the hear clicks in and pops exactly, of the space exactly that's the and sound you... of that manure pile very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are a mineral content from space, so it we only makes sense. It's, I, I hadn't actually considered that. Well, we uh, are. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. are from space, so we are from soil. Yeah. So it's all part of the same equation. So, Very interesting. So these images are, are kind of a backdrop for... Um, a, the for the audio and the sound work which is made from conversations that were held over the last year at two different feast events between farmers food scientists and policy makers um, at two different feast events um, talking about the reality of farming today mm -hmm. and what it is people think might help make for sustainable food production in Ireland. Oh, very interesting project. And this has been going on. I think we started talking about it in the middle of COVID, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. It was, so that makes it three years ago, three four years, years ago. Research has gone into this. And I met you in Carlo at the Shaw at Visual, at Visual yeah. sorry, uh, where you were doing your potatoes. And I said, we must talk. And you said, we must talk. Uh, exactly. I think you were part of the women art, women farmers in the southeast. I was right? indeed. Yes. And I was exhibiting a previous film, the last film I made, also shot by Tom, 
Beautifully in, shot by Tom, in I'll say. Carlo and in visual. And um, I was invited by visual to come and talk to this group of women farmers. And that's how we first encountered one another. And our conversation went from, from potatoes to sanfoin. It did, because uh, which mirrored the work that I, a work that I made at Carlo after that film was shown, um, which was actually the, the first part of this project, The Quickening. That first part was called Sustainment Experiments. And the idea of sustainment was put forward by a design philosopher called Tony Fry, Australian design philosopher. Mm -hmm. And he talks about the idea of the, the, this moment of sustainment being the equivalent to the moment of the Enlightenment, when cultural behaviours and attitudes were shifted completely from an idea of, I suppose, human life being governed by the church and by, by God and the king yeah. to the individual, you know, if the Enlightenment heralded the age of the individual. Yeah. And all that came with that from scientific developments. Now the age of sustainment is about thinking not just about us human individuals, but all human, all, sorry, all earthly life forms. Which and means from the grass to the fungus to the flora exactly, to the fauna from to the bacteria to the megafauna to 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 your horses in your field to the birds in the air to all all living creatures including earth, worms and dung beetles including worms and dung beetles and i suppose it was our conversations about what makes for healthy soil that came out of the project that i did at visual where i used potato ridges to break the ground for a later planting of sandfoin uh, which is a fodder crop that I had researched in the UK previously. And sandfoin is a crop that I think has real potential here in Ireland for farmers to farm sustainably without depend be being dependent on nitrates and has all because it sequesters nitrogen in the soil and it has all these additional benefits like high protein, like anthelmintic properties, so it reduces parasites. Um, as well as huge amounts of biodiversity benefits and um, uh, other benefits that don't immediately come to mind. But it's, it's a really interesting crop. Oh yeah, the primary benefit and the thing that got me interested in the first place. In Sandfoin. In Sandfoin. Is that it grows in drought. Oh, because it's so deep-rooted. It, really it has massive deep, deep roots. Deep roots. Um, and I was thinking, well, with climate change, this is a this is a fodder crop. You know, we're dependent on rye grasses here in Ireland. They've short, shallow root systems, and the minute you get a drought, the grass shrivels and dry, dies. Yes, sandfoin is a perennial. It'll return. It's hard to establish. It's not an easy crop to begin with. I won't yeah, make any. I won't hide that fact, but um, once it gets going, once go, well, you know, the second year. So what I did was I used potato ridges planted, made by the members of the Irish Law Association, who've been frequent collabor collaborators in my work. Yeah. I used potato ridges to break the ground in the shape of a, an I Ching hexagram. Ah. So the I Ching is a way of telling about the future. Yeah. That has been around in China for thousands of years. Yes. And I cast the I Ching using an app, of course. As yeah. We do these days. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, to the question, what's the future of sustainable agriculture in Ireland? Yeah. And the I Ching threw up a quote, which essentially the, the, the primary thrust of it was act modestly. Yeah. Don't follow progress models. Don't follow policy. Do the right thing. So that's become the kind of overarching symbol and um, principle behind that I'm trying to communicate through the project. So this, the I Ching hexagram was remade in potato ridges first, and now that shape is being maintained in sandfoin.
And you did that, and you even had, where was it in Asia that um, they, they... And in Korea, we did a second planting to the same pattern, but using buckwheat. And, and so that I Ching hexagram in a slightly varied form will become the sign and the symbol of this project. Um, it's on your shoulder. Yeah, yep, gone. gone. Uh, this project called The Quickening, when it opens at the Douglas Hyde Gallery, I'm hoping that we will have flags all over Dublin. With the your your specific I Ching? With my specific the I Ching hexagram 15, hexagram 15, which was thrown up in response to that question. So actually posing the question to a much wider public in Dublin. Yes, yeah. You know, and, and that... I'm also doing a project at Emma at the same time. A planting again a potato planting which is again around the future of sustainable fodders and and animal husbandry in Ireland so actually all of this is a way of kind of trying to surface some of the complexity around food and farming why do we need animals within farming in Ireland and we need them because of this stuff that's why I'm filming. The manure we need the and the manure, microbiology and the micro that the manure reintroduces. Exactly, into the soil. And therefore, all that whole chain, ecosystem chain. Um, and cycle. So it, 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 it's, it's, that's why we need dung beetles. Yep. That's why, in, a, in another work I'm doing, which will show in St. Mullins in the end of July, you've probably gone past your... No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Keep going. In St. Mullins on the 29th of July at um, 2.30, uh, there will be a performance of the song of the farmer and the dung beetle, which is your word, Susanna, <laughs> taken and sung to the accompaniment of dung beetles recorded here on your farm. I think this is so cool. And performed by Michelle Doyle, who's a kind of genius with taking audio recordings and making them into um, song. And an amazing singer called Siobhan Kavanagh, who also arranged the work. So, oh, that's going to be brilliant. It well, is. I better let you and Tom get to work filming the... Here's Tom is making his way around the this dung heap, my young dung heap, uh, which is not a year old, but months old. And he's going to run into a puppy who wants to be filmed. Look at that. Java's decided. <laughs> Java, um, come here. It's come here. Right. The camera's not on him. Oh, the camera's not on him. Oh, okay. So, and we're not filming with sound. It's visual. Come on. Well, we already have the soundtrack. <laughs> From, yes. Okay, going above the puppy. He's trying very hard to be a movie star. Look at that. He already is. <laughs> okay, excellent. Well, I will leave you to filming worms and, and manure heaps. Aging manure heaps. <laughs> Without a puppy. I'll take the puppy away. <laughs>